Good morning, everybody. And this, the last Sunday of August, that can be a bit frightening, except for those who are looking forward to heading to classes or virtual classes or a mix thereof. Uh, we're glad to have everyone here this morning. I was saying earlier I was a little bit, bit late connecting. The traffic was heavy. No, uh, we don't have that excuse, do we, to be online for Zoom. We're glad to have you here, uh, and I assure you we have a treat awaiting you right away uh, with some beautiful, a beautiful piece by Claude de Debussy. And so, let's worship God.
those who have a worship candle, I invite you to light it now. May I be open to your spirit, O God, and may your radiance surround me in this time set apart. The grace of our sovereign Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. Our opening hymn this morning from Voices United, number 608. Dear God, who loves all humankind. we come before God now in prayer. Holy One, we seek to begin our week in our faith community and in your presence. Here we find a refuge from the current storm that endangers all humanity. And so we have sought to be set apart this morning. Yet, as Moses learned, our call is not to avoid your world, but through our efforts with your guidance and support, to change it for the better. Help us to move beyond the limits of fear and frustration into the realm of the creative possible and the inspiring active presence of a true community of faith. I beseech you now to hear the petitions on behalf of others that we bring before you in silent prayer. To these concerns, we add our prayers for the control of the minds and actions of those who are called to serve and protect, that they do just that. 
We pray for an end to the racial strife that besets this continent and much of the planet. We pray for the shining forth of human dignity and the ability to live one's life equally, justly, and in peace. God, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. We pray for the environment. For the wildfires that are raging. For the more frequent and more dangerous hurricanes and typhoons. For the signs of a mother in crisis. We pray that we might be stewards of your creation, O oh God. God, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. And this morning, we are mindful of the members of our faith community that have lost a loved one in the year past. for whom that whole is something they've learned to start to walk around, but that there are times when an action or image brings the pain fresh again to them. We pray that they might be mindful of the love of this community and of your love. O oh God, hear our prayers. And in your love answer. But these are the concerns that weigh heavily on our hearts this morning, that we now turn over to the grace of Christ. Amen. Amy, do you know what those are? How about Dietrich? Have you ever been and ever picked a fresh peach? Or maybe a mango or papaya? Maybe strawberries or raspberries, but you have to go a bit further to find a nice fresh peach. In this country, you'd either have to go to the Okanagan, uh, where recently they're producing smoked peaches, uh, or to the Niagara region, which is getting increasingly in danger because of suburbs. We're building houses on very precious land that can grow because of the Niagara escarpment can grow these peaches. And I want to uh, bring one that I have with me here this morning. Oh, it smells so good. It smells like a peach, tells the breeze. But you know, so often throughout the year, if you get peaches in the stores and you put them to your nose, you don't smell anything. Nor do they have that lovely, no gentle fuzzy surface but there's something more fascinating i'm going to do a miracle right now in front of you i can cut it oh it's juicy good thing i've got a paper towel and i'll cut it the other way into quarters and now for the miracle Where's the camera? There it is. Look at that. One, two, three, and finally four. Now that might not seem like a miracle to you. Not doesn't compare to a burning bush that we're going to hear in the the. Hebrew scriptures this morning for God's presence, but I think it is because it, it's a specially developed peach. It's called a freestone. Red Havens, to be precise, a special peach tree that was cultivated to grow in cooler climes and also produce abundant fruit, but most importantly, to be freestone. To be able to take the pit out, which you have to be careful with. I guess it contains some uh, a bit of cyanide because it has a bitter taste to it. You have to be careful with the peach pit. But the peach itself, to be able to eat them in quarters and to be so without being messy, 
that's pretty, you know, pretty amazing. And it's, I just really look forward to the end of August when we can have freestone peaches. They were, they were my mom's favorite. They're always the best. I miss Aunt Jean's peach pie though. But there's a sadness too, because when the peaches are ripe and the freestones, you wait for them and they're wonderful, but that means it's the end of August and pretty soon uh, the leaves will change color and then fall and then we go into winter. So it's wonderful to wait. Maybe there's lessons here to learn that yes, we could have peaches all year round. They wouldn't be freestone and they wouldn't have the smell and they wouldn't have the taste. We have to take the seasons and the days in their course and be content and look forward to what is ahead. Not even winter, it has its beauty. But in these late days of summer and the last days of summer, it's awfully nice to be able to have fresh peaches. We're going to sing a hymn now, and I know I should share, but I'm not going to. Morning has broken. scripture this morning is from the book of Exodus chapter 3 verses 1 to 15. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this wondrous sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called out to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. 
Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their suffering, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jezebites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. You have been brought, when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, Eya asher eya. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, Yeshua has sent you to them. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. This is the witness of your people Israel. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is number 105, Voices United, number 828, with refrain. Give thanks and call on God's name. Make known to the nations what God has done. Sing, O oh sing the songs of praise. Tell of all God's wonderful deeds. Exalt in God's holy name. Let those who seek God be joyful in heart. Turn for help to the one who is your strength. Seek God's presence continually. Remember the marvels the Most High has done, the wonders and judgments God has given. O children of Abraham and Sarah, God's servants. O offspring of Israel, chosen of God.
eternal God. Your justice reaches every corner of the earth. You are ever mindful of your covenant, the promise you gave to a thousand generations. The covenant you made with Sarah and Abraham, the oath you gave to Isaac. You confirmed it for Jacob as binding to it Israel, your everlasting covenant you declared. To you I give the land of Canaan as your appointed inheritance. cut off the supply of bread. But you sent one ahead of them, Joseph, whom they had sold as a slave. His feet were hurt with fetters, his neck collared with iron. Until his predictions came true, your word tested him. Then the king sent and released him. The ruler of nations set him free. He made Joseph master of his house, ruler of all his possessions. To correct his officials at will. To teach his counselors wisdom. came to Egypt when Jacob settled in the land of Ham there you made your people fruitful stronger than their foes but when you turned their hearts to hate your people to deceitful dealing with your servants and then you sent your servant Moses and Aaron whom you had chosen out the spoil of silver and gold. Among the tribes not one fell behind. The Egyptians were glad when they went, for dread of Israel had fallen upon them. You spread cloud as a screen and fire as light by night. The people asked, and you sent them quail. You filled them with the bread from heaven. You opened a rock and water gushed out. It flowed like a river through the arid land. promise that you made to Abraham and Sarah the servants. You led out your people rejoicing, your chosen ones with songs of gladness. You gave them the lands of nations. They took possession where others had toiled, 
that they might keep your laws and obey your teachings. Chapter 16, verse 21, 28. Time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and under and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happened to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his agents, angels in the glory of his Father. And he will repay everyone for what is done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who before the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Here is what the Spirit is saying to the church. Write these words on our hearts, O God. Our hymn is number 82 from More Voices Bathe me in your light. Oh! 
overcoming leadership issues. Isn't that a wonderful image of a woman struggling against the elements? <laughs> Many women in this community of faith would recognize this in their careers. Uh, having to work, as Charlotte Whitten said, twice as hard to be seen as just as good. Overcoming, overcoming the problems, the barriers, the boundaries, and overcoming the current situation that affects leadership. Leadership in the congregation, community of faith, or whatever you call it, as we evolve and twist and turn is becoming more complicated. Our attention spans are decreasing. Our lack of desire to deal with anything awkward or questioning or challenging, unless it's a way that we like to be challenged. We like to worship God, but Lord help you if it's a bit more than an hour. I don't know why it became that God only got one hour of the week. It's supposed to be a tenth of time, but there you go. So I thought as we start to merge into what used to be the normal busyness of the fall, Lord knows what it'll be like this year. It's good to ground ourselves in a very ancient story, a beginning story. A story of a relationship with God and God's particular call to leadership. The story of the burning bush. And those from a Presbyterian background will be very happy this morning. Nek consuma batter. The symbol of Presbyterianism that's still in our crest. But here I turn to Chagall because when I want mystical and mythical and wondrous, uh, Chagall is about as good as it gets to show an image. And there he, there is Moses with the traditional light that comes from him after this encounter. And there's the sheep on the field that he's pastoring to go leave them to see. And you see in the corner the Hebrew people in bondage and the other ones just waiting for leadership, waiting to be brought out from this strange encounter. And in that firing essence of the bush that's burning but not being consumed, a hand, a hand of God directing, directing Moses to deal with what God has observed. And it raises the question in leadership, well, why now, God? They've been suffering for some time. And they've been oppressed for some time. Why now? Well, there's a point where we say, that is God's to decide. See, it's God who says, I have seen and I have heard and I am acting and I am calling. I am calling you, Moses. Now, in the reading this morning, I followed the Hebrew tradition of not saying the holy name. We have become far too comfortable with God. Yes, what a friend we have in Jesus. But there's an aspect of which God is still God, and that's shown when Moses, who raised with the gods of Egypt and the court of Egypt, encountering the mystery, shields his face, at least remembers how to behave in church. And that line, take the shoes off your feet. For the ground on which you stand is holy ground. What is holy for us anymore? What act do we perform that shows deference and reverence 
to something other than ourselves. <laughs> Increasingly, there's a, a group that says, no, uh, I can do what I want when I want, as I want, and if I can't, I'll hold my breath and stomp my feet and I'll tear down statues and uh, I'll say that everything is a hoax because I don't like it because you're impinging on my freedoms. <laughs> what freedoms? Hardly the bondage of the people in Israel. Hardly the bondage of the African North American communities and their history of pain and suffering. Hardly the bondage that's going on around this planet with many First Nations, including First Nations peoples in the Philippines who are dealing with mining and rather questionable practices of Canadian mining companies. We are very easy to have mining companies established here for our good. It's good to hear the story. That's why that was a long psalm. I'm sorry, Tom, you had a, a lot of work to do this morning. Uh, the salvation history, the story of what was involved in getting to where we are now of what was involved, the sacrifices, the challenges, and the leadership that got us there. This week has been another convention. I did, must admit I didn't watch all of it. I did watch some just to get a scope of the land. Not that that's really my business. I'm not voting. But I watched the Democratic Convention, and particularly this. Now, I admit this is... Uh, equally a slick production and equally for directed to sway of voters. Nevertheless, I thought this was quite phenomenal of this young lad who uh, wanted to speak and has been speaking and he deals with a stutter. And he deals with that and is willing to stand and, and, and to show some leadership and is showing leadership because of Vice President Biden and his overcoming of a stutter. And I thought it was good to bring that to the fore today because in the stories from Exodus, Moses stutters. I was tempted to read his lines that way, although that could be perceived as mocking, and I certainly don't wish to do that. In fact, exactly the opposite. That those who have overcome difficulties of even communicating simple sentences in positions of great leadership. Here are some of them. Some you may know, some you may not. These are all individuals who have had to, in their lives, overcome the difficulty of stuttering. James Earl Jones, with a beautiful bass voice like that, a baritone, you would wonder. Ed Sheeran, the singer. Well, we knew from the King's speech that singing, sometimes you don't stutter. His Majesty King George VI, in that wonderful film about his challenges in the King's speech. Marilyn Monroe. I did not realize she stuttered as well. But a large number of people, and an amazing amount of them, find themselves in places of significant leadership, significant challenges of speaking and communicating with the difficulty they face. Cardi Simon. I didn't know that. The strength and perseverance and willingness to risk and willingness to overcome leadership issues they have. So what about us? Able-bodied, able to speak, not dealing with many problems. It's been said that when your fear, your struggles, your struggles consume you. When you face your struggles, you overcome them. The burning bush, the struggles that consume us. 
Consume an impatient people, impatient for we want things now, conveniently, on our schedule, rather than God's schedule. And so, before us as a community of faith, as we go into still wandering and finding who we are called by the Holy One to be, and where we will exercise our call. We need patience. We need reverence. We need faith. We need to not be frightened of God's future. Or, as we'll see in the next slide, of overcoming our fear in sharing Jesus. That's a big one these days. We may not stutter, uh, but we certainly uh, don't want to be too public. That's kind of weird, isn't it? And embarrassing and uh, not popular with our neighbors. But if we believe that God is here and God is in Christ and that the church has a mission and purpose, then surely we need as leaders in a global community to overcome fear in sharing Jesus. Not telling people who Jesus is in the sense of directing them, but sharing Jesus, sharing the message, sharing the stories, sharing the tradition, sharing the reverence, sharing the communion of faith. Overcoming fears in sharing our faith and the one who's at the center of it. Albert Camus wrote, In the depth of winter, I finally learned that within me there lay an invincible summer. As we head into a winter in this northern realm, and Lord knows what, Will we be able to meet again? How will we meet again in a physical space? May we bring the season of late summer, of ripe peaches and beauty of creation, and our faith, a faith that burns within us and through us without being consumed. That within us lies an invincible, eternal summer. Amen. Jesu, Lord, that readest me, and with thy blessed love hast talked. Forgive that I have grieved.
I invite you now to prepare yourselves for silent meditation, silent prayer. And to do so by shaking off the weak past, of moving the body, of being aware of it, of sitting upright if you're able, of taking the time to focus on your breathing and to breathe in through your nose and to hold it and out through your mouth and to focus on your breathing and let your breathing be a guide to quiet the hamster wheel of the mind, to still racing thoughts. And you might use an image or just your breathing to accomplish this challenging exercise. And when you're ready to close your eyes and we will allow the sound of the singing bowl to take us into silent prayer and then back out as we share the prayer of Jesus.
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And strengthen us to avoid temptation, yet even there deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our parting hymn this morning from Voices United, number 511, Before You Now, O God. mindful of that. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence and to live with respect in creation and to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us, and we are never alone. May the Holy One bless you and keep you. May the countenance of the Holy One shine upon you and encompass you. And may you, through the experience of the divine, live in wholeness and in peace. Amen.
This concludes our worship service this morning. Thank you for being with us. Next Sunday, the Reverend Richard DeLorme will be leading in the service uh, from Vancouver, from the glorious west end of that wonderful city on the Pacific. So we will be uh, a wider communion next Sunday. And I hope you enjoy his gifts of leadership as I've enjoyed his uh, wit and mind and friendship. <laughs>